Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. My name is Dimitri Lila, and I'm the host, and I'm here again with Suze. Hi, Suze. Welcome back to Toolbox. Thank you. It's really good to be here. Yeah, it's awesome. So we're back here to talk about another one of our uh, episodes based on the Windows IoT series that we're creating. Uh, this is episode number five, I believe. Yes, so it is. So yep. episode five. Mm -hmm. So today, uh, we're going to cover some interesting stuff. So tell us a little bit about what you're going to show. Yeah, so in the last episode, we were showing how to take some telemetry from some of our sensors and send them to the cloud. But this time, we wanted to talk about scenarios where maybe we want the cloud to talk back down to our smart device. Cool. All so right. we're, so we're going to look at that. Um, I sort of thought about the scenario of we already have a camera, and we were using that to kind of recognize and greet somebody. But I thought, what if we could use it as like a spy cam when you're sort of not in your home and you want to know something like, are the cats on the kitchen counter and are they misbehaving or you just want to check up on the house? I thought it would be cool to be able to control the camera remotely and to tell the Raspberry Pi running Windows IoT Core to actually take a photo and upload it somewhere so that we can actually see what's going on. Cool. So so I guess another way that I, I kind of like to think about this, this, uh, this uh, scenario is contrived. This is just the thing we're showing, yeah. but in general, any any device sitting somewhere out in the world, you at some point probably want to communicate to it, get telemetry from it, send commands to it, get data from it. That's the flow we're trying to show between these, these couple of episodes here. And today's thing happens to be a video camera thing, yep. but it could be any sensor could send data back, or you can real-time request some updates or trigger some mechanical arm to slap Dimitri in the side of the head, or whatever, <laughs> wherever it is, it would work. Yes. It's just this, this is the scenario we're showing. So l yep. let's talk about the products involved that, that we're going to demonstrate. So from, um, from the hardware, I mean, this mm -hmm. is just still the same Raspberry Pi we had before. Yes. And we have a, a camera here. This is a USB camera, the standard. There's, there's a bunch that Windows IoT supports, right? Yeah. So this is just your regular live cam from Microsoft, and that mm -hmm. one is like guaranteed to work with this. So. Great. So we just plug it in. There was no mm -hmm. drivers, nothing else. No, nope, just that's USB really cool. connection. It's all ready to go. Yeah. I think if, if people saw all the stuff you have in front of you and they never <laughs> watch another episode, they'd be like, yeah. they'd be like, well, it's a lot of stuff. I don't, I don't know how to set that up. But really, for this particular demo, it's just Ethernet and mm -hmm. a camera. And yeah. I, and the uh, Raspberry Pi. That's right. It's not actually, like technically we're still sending telemetry with these sensors, but mm -hmm. we're sort of not really talking about them as much today. So yeah. at the minimum, like you said, you would just need a camera in order to start sort of remotely taking pictures, which is pretty cool. Awesome. So from that perspective, we've got all the code in Visual Studio, right? We're going to show that's the, still the C-sharp project that's yes. up on GitHub that people can take a look at, yep. same code. And what makes then the magic work of, of the, you know, talking through the cloud? Which product enables that? Yeah, so we used IoT Hub um, earlier in other episodes, and it's the same thing again. So we're mm -hmm. going to be using our existing Azure IoT Hub instance, and it has this really cool built-in um, messaging feature, which allows you to connect like some kind of Azure storage container to it. So mm -hmm. in this case, we're going to be using Blob Storage. Um, and it's really, really clever, because once you configure it, you can just use the regular Azure IoT Hub SDK that we've used in our code in former episodes in order to then upload a file. And in this case, our file is going to be the photo that the, um, right. that the camera took. So we're going to be using um, both Azure Storage and Azure IoT Hub together to do that. And Azure IoT Hub is also going to take care of the remote call down to the device as well. So it's sort of only a couple of products in order mm -hmm. to get some kind of powerful scenario like this going. Cool. So Azure IoT Hub is like our gateway. It's the thing that yep. we can send it a message, and all the devices registered with it will then receive the message downstream, the ones that we, we intend. In this case, we only have one-to-one -one kind right. of scenario. Yep. Um, and then from the perspective of then the device sending data back, it just gets put into a blob because that's our contrived sort of picture, yes. picture scenario. Yep. Cool. Yep. So is that what we're looking at here, the IoT Hub? That's right. So. Um, after you've clicked on your um, IoT Hub instance in the portal, you can scroll down to the messaging section, and you'll see an option called File Upload. So I just click directly on that. And if you've already set up um, an Azure Storage account in, um, in your portal, which I would recommend you do first, you'll see it come up in the list. And so you're, you're able to select that. Um, so that's your account. And then if you create a storage container within that account for blobs, that's going to come up automatically as well. And so um, from there, um, I, I just have a couple of different options. I've left them all on the defaults for now. And that's really all it takes in order to link storage and IoT Hub together, which is really cool. And then the mm -hmm. code that you write doesn't really have to care about those finer details. It's just using the SDK from there. Cool. So uh, one specific question, how do we tell um, the IoT Hub 
that this is the, the Raspberry Pi that we want to talk to? Like, how do we connect the two together? Oh, are you talking about the IoT devices here? Yes. Yes. Because to me, like, that wouldn't be clear if I was watching this the first time. I might not, not realize that you have to go in here first, right, and make sure your device is listed. Yes. Uh, and then that's how, we, that's how IoT Hub is, knows that this is one of the devices. And here's a bunch of uh, configuration that makes it possible, right, the keys and such. Yeah. So I'm using my connection string here, um, and I'm using that within my C Sharp uh, UWP app that I made with Windows IoT Core. Cool. So when, when we start the code, I guess the code s to tells IoT, hey, I'm a device now that's live and listening. And based on those connection strings, it, it now knows, OK, we have one device listening. And then we start executing code against it. Exactly. Okay. Yep, that's okay. totally how it works. So every time the Pi comes on, it has to sort of like phone home to IoT Hub mm -hmm. and say, hey, these are my credentials. Am I allowed to like have that, bi uh, that bi-directional communication? OK, cool. Cool. All right, so um, maybe we can take a look at the code to see like how, how that's configured. Like, all right, you, you have your C-sharp project, but did you have to add some NuGet package to work with IoT Hub, for example, I'm assuming? Mm -hmm. So in the last episode, we added um, the IoT Hub SDK, and it's just the regular C-sharp SDK, mm -hmm. so there's no difference whether you're using it um, on like ARM, um, like a Pi, or a different machine. And what's nice is that we have this feature that essentially can listen for device method calls. So we can create a name of a method. It can be, um, for example, in this case, we have one called upload photo. And then we can have, once it connects to the IoT Hub, it can say, OK, I'm now going to listen for these very special messages coming from the cloud, from the IoT Hub. Mm -hmm. And if that message happens to be a request to call a certain device method called upload photo, um, then I'm going to then take an action from there. So right. this is a very sort of standard setting a handler in order to listen for that. And that's through our Azure IoT Hub client, which is pretty cool. Cool. So, so this maps just back to a method right there in C Sharp. So you have something called unupload photo. That's down correct. Below. Yep. So this is my method name um, for Azure IoT Hub to send, mm -hmm. and this is the actual um, method that it's going to call locally. Awesome. So I have one here. It is on upload photo, as you mentioned, uh, and then from there you'll see that a lot of this code is pretty standard. Again, if you're just using a webcam. Um, class, for example, you can just take a photo, and then we can create that in a storage file instance. And from there, uh, the Azure IoT Hub SDK has this really cool and very convenient method called upload to blob. Right. <laughs> um, and that's where we give it, maybe we just need to give it the name of it. So, you know, whatever we actually called it in the first place, um, that should be something like, I think, photo.jpg. And then we give it the photo stream, and it's able to then just take care of it from there, which is actually really convenient. Like, the SDK just does it in one line for you. Yeah, this is cool because you don't have to learn a separate SDK to upload to Blob Storage and understand all those connection strings, all, all of that separate uh, stuff you normally would do with Azure Storage. Here, it's part of the IoT Hub SDK is one of the scenarios they, they support out of the box, which is really cool to kind of point out. Um, and so now we, we have this program is actually running. So it's mm -hmm. actually running on your Pi right there. It's, uh, it's showing us the temperature and stuff yep. we showed in the previous episode. Mm -hmm. And it's waiting for a potential call. So I think one of the things we, we wanted to demonstrate in the episode was this notion that in the real world scenario, we would have yet another app we would have built yes. that would talk up to the cloud, then mm -hmm. the cloud would talk down to the device. But as you're developing this part of the code, you might not have that app ready yet, right? So you might need some, some way to sort of use IoT Hub in a debug scenario. So show us how that works. Yeah, I'm really glad you asked about that because it seems like you have to create all of these pieces all at the same time and it can be really overwhelming just to get the device call yeah. um, going. So we like to use uh, a really cool tool called the Device Explorer. Um, it is offered um, by Microsoft. And so if you navigate to the um, SDK for C Sharp, um, which is our offering for Azure IoT, you'll actually be able to download the Device Explorer from this repository here. Yeah, um, and we'll put a link and we'll, you know, to make sure folks know. Yeah, to totally. To so in the releases, um, it, we do have um, one that was released recently, and it works really well. So I wanted to sort of show you some of the really powerful features of this. I use it literally every time I'm creating devices like this so that I don't have to have like um, some kind of dashboard going on just to even see if my messages are coming into IoT Hub. Yeah. And so the data tab um, as part of this program 
is able to monitor all of the different devices that are under your hub. In mm -hmm. this case, I only have my smart IoT device, which is literally live sending telemetry on the desk right now. And so you can see that coming in with the timestamps and the different temperature settings. And then if I was to like try and breathe on this, then it might get a little warmer, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, we believe you. <laughs> um, but this is actually live data coming in, which is really cool. Yeah. We have another tab that we can use, and that is call method on device. And this is truly a lifesaver when you're debugging this stuff because you just want to you know, test out this scenario really quickly. And so again, you choose your IoT hub um, on the configuration tab that I won't show. It does actually ask for your connection strings. So that's how it kind of does it. Yeah. And then you can pick your device ID from there. Again, we've only got one device. And then I typed in the method name ahead of time, which is upload photo. And I just wanted to link that really, really quickly back here. So this is where I'm actually setting up the keyword for that um, method name. And then I have to put the exact same one in here. Mm -hmm. So cool. it's not actually my um, C sharp method. It's the, the actual string that we're setting yeah. there. It's a string that's map, mapped to the callback that's waiting for, for it in there. That's mm -hmm. cool. And then you can also supply a method payload. So you can have something like, oh, maybe I want to take three photos. And so maybe you'll put some JSON in here to say count equals three or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, or you could just have a certain folder name that maybe you want to upload it to in blob storage and things like that. So I really like method payloads just for being able to call one method, but almost like sending arguments in a way um, for it to react based on them. But I tried to simplify it just for this um, specific example. And the payload is unnecessary in this case. Cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click call method. And it's actually going to tell me whether or not the device responded. And you can kind of see in the background it's, uh, it's doing a couple of things. And usually, we should get a response telling us um, whether or not it was successful or not. Um, and so this is the actual code that ran. Um, and if we navigate to our blob storage, we should actually see whether or not it took a photo for us right. of our lovely duck. Yeah. Our, our Debugging stunned, duck. I'm stunned duck. I'm debugging <laughs> duck. I like it. Yeah. So I'm going to click on device uploads, which you might remember is the uh, container that I used for the file upload. So you see here, device mm -hmm. uploads. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to click. And I'm going to click on this folder, which is where I was uploading things to. And you'll have to believe us because you don't have a timestamp. Uh, but this is the exact photo that was just taken. Yeah. And I'm going to click on photo. and. What's neat about this is I don't have to have, again, another app with like um, showing photos that got taken. The portal actually allows you to download that photo immediately so you can kind of see whether or not it worked. Yay. And yeah, as so you see part of our studio in the background with the camera facing us, but you also see our duck friend here who is blown out a little bit by the bright studio lights. But Yeah, we have really bright lights above <laughs> us. So sorry about the duck. But there Next he is time, there. We'll get little lights above you so that the duck can get its respect. Yes, I think he needs to go into makeup as well. Yeah, <laughs> so that was not a lot of code yeah. to do that. And you can set up multiple methods. And again, you can kind of filter on some of those um, payload properties as well, depending mm -hmm. on what you want to do, which is pretty cool. Yeah, this is awesome. I mean, th this enables a ton of scenarios. And I, I love does. the fact that we have like all these tools to send, you know, like any method in your code could be sent using that tool to say, hey, run this thing with this payload. Mm -hmm. And then we, we've got all the tools to visualize or download the files that are being uploaded to Blob Storage. In general, I, I think um, lots of us have built the like, custom tools just to get through our days of debugging before we build the real tool that calls it a real, the real app. This enables us to just move forward. So that's really cool. Cool. Awesome. All right. Well, this is another piece of the puzzle. And uh, you know, we'll, we'll show folks more more stuff in future episodes, but uh, is that all we wanted to cover today? Yeah, that was pretty much it. Um, just being able to sort of use some of the more advanced features of IoT Hub once you're actually comfortable with sending the telemetry up. All right. Cool. Well, thank you folks for watching. We hope you check out the other episodes of the series. We have four other episodes before this one, and we're going to record one more that we for sure know. We might yes. do more than, than that, but one more is coming. Yep. Uh, so thank you for watching, and please uh, send us your comments. Thank you for watching Visual Studio Toolbox. See you next time. Bye.